On this episode, I make the shared steam chest that mounts between the two cylinders. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. The steam chest is going to be cut from a block of cast iron round. It would have been great to cut this from a piece of plate, but the only piece of plate I've got is under 10mm, and I need almost twice that. First step is going to be to rough out three flat sides. I'll do this with a mill using a 12mm roughing end mill. Once I've got the first flat side, I flip the block over and repeat. I then set the two flat sides in the jaws of the mill vise and remove the surplus material. Once I've cut the third flat side and have two square corners, I cut the fourth on the horizontal bandsaw. This will allow me to recover as much material as possible. Then it's back to the mill to machine the cut face down to size. I left a bit of surplus on the side as the bandsaw always wanders a little bit. At this point I also clean up the cut ends of the original round. This will bring the block to its final size. The next step is to machine the stuffing boxes. These are where the valve rods pass into the steam chest and stop steam escaping. The part is accurately located using an edge finder to set the digital readout. At this point the holes are drilled, starting with a spotting drill. I then double check the location, as I don't have any surplus material. I drill a hole slightly undersized, as I'll be reaming these shortly. Before I get to that, I drill a short hole which will be threaded for the stuffing box. This is then tapped using the spring tapping guide to centre the tap. I then finish the holes with a 3mm reamer. Then it's time to remove the surplus material from around it. Once the surplus material is removed, I switch to a 6mm end mill and the rotary table. The part is mounted in a toolmaker's vise on top of the rotary table. This allows the part to be easily flipped for the second hole. Since the last episode, I've made myself some toe clamps, which make mounting the toolmaker's vise much easier. I 
make the cuts and a couple of passes, as a 6mm end mill has limited rigidity. But the benefit of a 6mm end mill is it's a better surface finish because they can run at a faster RPM. At this point it's time to switch back to the mill vise. The next step is to cut the slide valve pocket. This will remove most of the material from the centre of the block. Once again the block is accurately located using the edge finder to set the digital readout. I'm using a 14mm end mill to rough out the pocket. Once the bulk of the roughing out of the pocket is done, I switch end mills, changing to a long 10mm solid carbide end mill. This will allow me to reach the bottom and make full vertical cuts in one pass. I do this in very small increments to avoid deflection of the end mill. With the pocket complete, I flip the part over to drill and tap the fixing holes. Once again the part is accurately located using an edge finder to set the digital readout. The holes are then located with the digital readout, started with a spotting drill, then followed by a tap sized drill. I do this for each hole one at a time so I avoid any misalignment. One last step is to cut a little recess for the steam passage which comes from one of the cylinder blocks. This will allow the high pressure steam to enter the steam chest, with the being exhausted through the cylinder blocks. Once the machining was done, it was time for assembly. I honed all the faces on a sheet of glass using emery paper. This removed any fine tool marks from the mating surfaces. The next part I need to make is a cover for the slide valve pocket. This will allow access for installing the slide valves and making any adjustments. As always this took a little longer than expected, but I'm pleased with the result. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like, subscribe and share. Catch you next time!